Hey. Hello, sir. <laughs> Hello, sir. <laughs> How are you this evening? Great. Welcome to the Nightcap. Episode 5 of Nightcap with the Land Geek Guys. We're the Land Geek Guys. We're live. I'm back from Florida. Hopefully my internet connection is a little bit better tonight. You're uh, so tan, by the way. No, actually, that's not true. I was hiding right. under an umbrella with a long sleeve shirt and a hat and voxering my, uh, all my VAs and just enjoying the kids as they went in the ocean. So um, I don't really have a tan. <laughs> I, uh, that's all right. You're taking care of your skin. That's very important. I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. So how how has your week been, Scott? I was on vacation, and you were uh, you were uh, doing what? Fill me in. Ah, uh, well, it was just a busy week with the uh, you know the the four boys and and my job and the land business. Uh, but tell you what, man, it's pretty awesome <laughs> that I'm spending less time in the job. Nice. And, uh, I like how you give it the initials. I think it gets yeah. a little bit more impact. Aaron, we will drink responsibly on tonight's show, sure. definitely. <laughs> we got some comments already flying in. Uh, now, a new smoke. Now, a smoking jacket and pipe. Yeah, I yes, think yes. We're Very raising nice. the bar every week, Andy. Thanks, Bill. Fit, fit and, and tan. Yes, so fit. I'm feeling it. He's I'm feeling it. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Chris, grab a beverage, man. It's, it's nightcap time. <laughs> time to kick back. Mike and I, you know, I think we should maybe admit to the community, Mike, that we're a little unprepared this week. So it's going to be a little bit more laid back. Yeah, we came off vacation and, and, uh, you know, but I think, uh, we definitely have some content to share. It's just going to be a little bit more, as you said, laid back fashion, but we're going to work off of the uh, questions as well. And Steve, thanks very much for the, uh, he liked our intro. We're getting better at it. We're gonna, you know, as things go along on the show, we're gonna get a little bit more um, technical. Technical savvy is gonna come this way, right? So uh, That's for sure, a little more geeky. This. Yep. Oh, look at this. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yes. that is awesome, Eric. I heard that you know secretly I am the favorite land geek guy of yours. Is that true? Yep. yep. Thank you, Eric, for that. <laughs> First time viewer. Looking sharp, fellas. Thank you, KJ. Excellent. That's, that's Jim Lala right there. <laughs> Him and his wife. Uh, okay, Jim. Very nice to have you in uh, flight school. Hopefully Excellent. that's going well. Awesome. Everybody um, share your drinks in the comments also. So, now, go ahead, Mike. What do to talk about first? I mean, we, we were talking. I think that there's something coming up pretty soon. Uh, I'm going to say it's less than a month away. What am I talking about, Scott? Less yes. than a month away. What is it? I think it's three weeks from Friday. Yeah, it's coming very quick. And what is this we're talking about? What is this? We are about? talking about the Las Vegas Land Geek Boot Camp. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Twenty eight camp. I love boot camp. It is just you know, and for people who have never been to a boot camp and maybe think of like, an, uh, you know, an investor type of uh, get together, you might think that, you know, hundreds of people, we think of real estate seminars We're you know, what's it, 40, 50 people, all the coaches are there, Mark, Scott, Tate, yourself, you know, uh, Eric, Scott Bossman, myself, we're all there. And it's in, there's like 40 or 50 people. It's a close knit group of like-minded people. Uh, it's just, there's a lot of networking. It's an awesome, you don't have to be like, in the back with some sort of binoculars. Is that Mark Podolsky up there? No, he's right. like right, right there, live and uh, you know interacting with you. So it's awesome. He's yeah, and Mark is very present. And uh, you know, uh, Mark, we hear Mark on these podcasts, and and uh, we think he's kind of this larger than life character, right? So to meet him, I remember I had like butterflies, you know, meeting Mark. Like this is a really big deal, and I, you know. I, I don't know. I just, uh, I was really excited for boot camp to meet Mark because he had already taken steps to, in helping me change my life and I hadn't even met him. Uh, right. and then like you wonder how the interaction is going to be like, is, is Mark going to be like present? Is he going to be there? You know, is, is he going to be as caring in person as he seems, you know, right. Right. to come across on the podcast and whatnot? And he totally is. He's he's present and just a genuinely good person and funny and a great teacher. And it, it's really just a great three days. It really is. 
well, this is, you know, perpetual uh, story we keep hearing about how the fact that you were very stoic at your first boot camp. Like Mark said, he was you were a hard egg to crack. Like he couldn't get a read on you. So is that true? Were you very kind of like questioning when you were there? Were you kind of – what was on your mind as you – I mean, here's Mark's interpretation that Scott's like very standoffish, very serious. What's going through your head as you're at the first boot camp? See, here's the, there? <clears throat> here's the thing. I think I come off that way, and I didn't, I didn't mean to come off that way. Like I'm a thinker, right? I'm very analytical. I need to think things through. So as Mark, Mark is teaching, I'm, you know, really thinking, right? And I have this look on my face, like, you know, pretty serious. Whereas my wife is, you know, bubbly, exciting, asking questions all the time. I'm quite reserved. Uh, so it's not that I wasn't, uh, it's not that I was a hard egg to crack necessarily. I just, I'm a different type of person on the Myers-Briggs scale, you know? Wow. Bringing in the Myers-Briggs scale. Yeah. I like that. What do you think? I think that's pretty good. So, but but to 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 also uh, expand on that, actually going into boot camp, Erin was more skeptical than I was. Okay. So I think she kind of went in with really low expectations. I don't know. Uh, but she came out, I mean, just raring to go. She was she was all about starting coaching and uh, just <laughs> loved the experience and uh loved mark and scott todd was there and uh the stories we heard from the land geeks uh were just phenomenal so i mean we by the time the weekend was over we were we were ready to to move forward i i think it's uh interesting and we're seeing more and more couples get involved right in this and mm-hmm. it's uh it really is something that you can do as a couple right it's something that you know one person can take a certain aspect of the business. The other one can take another. Everybody's got certain capabilities, certain areas where they shine in. So um, I think it works very well when couples get involved together. And we are seeing more and more of that. So it's interesting. I think that that's something that, uh, you know, maybe people don't initially consider when they think about the investing. That it really can be a, something that you do together and, and, and uh, you know, progress together. Yeah, I, I'm starting to ask, you know, we, we, we talk with people who are interested in the investor toolkit and in, and in flight school, and I, I'm starting to ask that more and more, you know, do you have a partner? Do you have somebody who can do this with you? Because it, it seems like it, uh, and you can expand on this here in a minute, Mike, but it seems like when there are there are two brains under the roof that are kind of soaking this all in and, and thinking about the process and, and doing some of the processing things mm-hmm. that it's more powerful. I mean, you get more done, you get, get to a point more quickly where you want to be. So, I mean, what was your experience with Laura as far as? Yeah. So she came in, you know, um, Laura actually came in like a little bit down the road from when we were doing, you know, she was working at the school system, but then I, uh, I quickly realized that, um, what an asset she could be at home helping out. So we moved in that direction and it's been, it's been great. Actually, she, you know, has certain areas that she shines in. And I would say maybe some that I shine in. She's over there looking right. I shine a little bit, you know. <laughs> I'm more of the people. She, like, she's not really huge on getting on the phone. And that's an interesting thing, too. People think that uh, you have to, uh, you know, really be savvy on the phone. Are you, you know, there are people that uh, have a really fear of the phone and, and talking to mm-hmm. people. And my wife happens to be with one, but she's getting better at it. And I, and I work with people that initially – they're just concerned that I'm going to have to do a lot of speaking on the phone. There really isn't a tremendous amount of phone dialogue you have to have, but when you do, it's actually empowering. You learn that it's not as difficult as you would think. You know, we're talking normal conversations. When we're dealing with people that want to sell us their land, we're having a normal conversation like this, right? It's a simple conversation and letting them know that this is what we'd like to pay them for the land. And and if there's a little negotiation, it's not a big deal. Uh, It's very, easy going and I think it's okay to approach it that way. Like it doesn't have to be very, you know, front you know, get that jacket, the tie nice and tight and speak right. very like it, it can be a very casual conversation and you can convey that trust and sincerity and make it happen. So um yeah, I mean can, I can can I expand on that a little bit? So yeah. So much of this business is about pushing your limits, right? Like um I I didn't have a day of business or marketing uh in my in my life, right? Before I started this, um, no business background, no marketing background, no banking or real estate background. So, I mean, I was in a position where I was having to constantly push my limits and to have somebody to do that with you, uh, it's just, it's, it's really helpful as far as pushing those limits because they instill confidence in you and, uh, 
just, you know, believe in you. So that's really important. <clears throat> and this, this kind of, um, I, I'd like to refer to the quote that I had in the, uh, in the round table podcast a couple of weeks ago, Mike, I don't know if you heard this or not, but I may have, uh, <laughs> you like to share. You like to share quotes on the roundtable podcast, right? Well, yeah. I, I I felt pretty proud that day because I actually shared a quote that I came up with. And oh, I you created it, a quote. I created a quote, and I think it really applies to this business. So I'm going to share the the quote with you. I'm going to share how the quote came about. All right. The quote master. I love it. Right. Right. So a couple days a week, I fill in at a nursing home here in La Crosse as the physical therapist, and I love working with these folks. I mean, uh, the caseload varies. They can be 50 years old. They can be 95 years old. Okay. But I just love working with these people, right? They, they have uh, varied and varied backgrounds and a lot of experience in life, and uh, so I'm always talking to them about life and uh, it, I try to make it more than just physical therapy, right? I try to make it, I try to make a connection with these people. So this lady, we'll call her Millie, right? She's like, Millie. she's like four feet eight and I'm six, four, right? So we're walking down the hall together and we're laughing and joking and whatnot. And, uh, <laughs> she, her quality walking isn't very good. So I try to coach them through this. I try to teach them how to walk better. And, and I said, now, Millie, I need you to take really big steps, okay? We need to take really big steps. Hit your heels first when you're walking. Millie, even people with short legs can take big steps. I like even that. people with short legs can take big steps. Now, I like that. I like that. How does that apply to the land business? When I started out, I had short legs everywhere. I had short legs in marketing. I had short legs in communicating with people. I had short legs in techie, geeky internet tools, right? I had short legs in all these different areas. I just had to push my limits and take big steps. And it's gotten to the point now where I've grown so much, right? To where it's becoming more and more natural. I mean, I was nervous as heck to talk to people on the phone. Now it's natural. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, it reminds me, you ever go walking in the snow when it's really deep and you're trying to trudge your own path, but then if you get someone in front of you and they're walking and you can kind of step where they step. And maybe some of you aren't really, like Scott and I, we're blessed with snow, another nor'easter hitting tonight. But, you know, a path that's laid before you and you can walk in those steps and it makes it a little bit easier, right, to, to kind right. of navigate the terrain. So. Yeah, I, I like that whole analogy. I think that's great. That kind of parlays into one of my quotes, may I? Yes, of course. Uh, I this, love this quote. Yeah, this one, I, I thought this was going to be on the cover of Mark's book, but it didn't quite make it. Uh, but maybe the next book, this will make the cover. It's, uh, it says, uh, even a fly can travel a thousand miles on a horse's tail. Now think about it. Love it. Come on, think about it, right? So if you just, you know, if you attach yourself to people who are successful, you too can be successful. If you surround yourself by success, you can be successful. So I think our two quotes kind of come together. Maybe one could be at the front of the book and one could be in the epilogue. Maybe yours is the epilogue. I, and mine the prologue. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I mean, you come first and I come later. That's how it is. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> well, the horse's tail, maybe that should be the, the uh, epilogue there. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, my wife spoiled my story, by the way. She oh no! I, I posted see this. the quote before I got to it. So we got just listened to this morning. We got here, right here, and you know, she just wanted everybody to make sure they heard what you said. You got that accent that people probably have a hard time understanding. Right, yes. So she wanted to make sure in writing. So I think she did a good job, Andy. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> and then boom! <laughs> and uh, she didn't mean to post it, Aaron. I think it's a great thing you did that because Scott's accent is so thick. That right, it's hard to understand like, me. Probably like, uh, you know, uh, shot, shot people. I mean, uh, it was a good idea. It was a good idea. 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 It was a great yeah. idea. Let me ask you this, and then we're going to get on. Hopefully, we're going to have some questions that come over here. So, guys, if you have some questions for Scott and I, this is a great Q&A session tonight. But, Scott, boot camp, what's, your, yeah. what's one of your favorite memories or takeaway, anything? What's, is there a moment that shines to you? And hopefully, you don't pick the same one I did. But let's see. Well, all right. So I've been to a couple boot camps. That the first one was just uh, I I talked about talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, meeting Mark was huge for me. Loved it. the The two other big memories from Vegas for me were 
uh, hearing the stories from the other Land Geek members, right? The the success stories from these folks that have been doing the business. Right. I mean, Bob Demick was there. Uh, he had not been doing the business very long, but he was going through coaching and he was doing a lot of deals. Uh, so, uh, you know, to, to hear from him and his experience uh, was was really, really beneficial. Irv Siegel was there. Um, so, you know, a lot of people in this business that I had been kind of following on Facebook were there and were able to tell their stories and not only like tell their background, but but they would talk about specific land deals, which really helped me. You know, when you hear the anatomy of a land deal coming from three or four or five different people, it really helps facilitate your learning. And then the other major, the other major thing for me was I actually did a deal at boot camp. Nice. Uh, so that was pretty cool to be, you know, taking in all things land from Mark Podolsky, the land geek, and actually doing a deal. That was yeah. that was real. That was really cool. So you know, you know we, that tends to happen quite a bit. If you, if you noticed, right, that that deals tend to get made at boot camp. I think that people get caught up in you know we go over every aspect of the business, even over ad writing and titles for Craigslist ads, and they get very creative, and people start taking action, you, you know, and things happen, and people do sell properties at the. Uh, a lot of people actually have started to you know kind of get in that kind of mindset and do that. So. That's awesome, and to have that experience, you know, it's powerful. You're there with all your uh, the people that are peers in the community, and and to make a sale, it's just awesome. That that yeah, is for sure. So I thought you were going to say meeting me, but that didn't come up. Well, um, well, of course, that was the that was number four on the list. Meeting you, that's pretty big up there, Mike. I mean, how about realizing that you really were famous at boot camp before? I mean, we've been going. I can't count how many boot camps Laura and I have been to, right? And and, and then realize that you're the dude buddy guy when Mark plays a sizzle reel and talks about, you know, people's experiences. And everybody, even Scott Todd, can quote you before it even comes on. I mean, did you know that? Did you know that you were you were boot camp famous before you even – did you know I, that? I had I had no idea. I had no idea because I've only been to two boot camps. I went to Vegas in 2015, and then I went to the last one in San Antonio. It just hasn't lined up right. Uh, but, <laughs> but anyway, I mean – You're boot camp uh, famous. I'm I, like – who is this guy? I remember looking at the, the, the dude, buddy, dude, buddy, dude just, buddy. Just feel like bragging a little bit, you know. <laughs> I'm on the verge of this big deal, uh, man. I, we should have had Scott, Scott Todd quote the last time we had him on here because he's got that down cold. That's awesome. But yeah, yeah you're, so those you don't know what we're talking about, like so, Mark. You know, he, he, we do all kinds of stuff at the boot camp from, uh, and it's all day Friday, all day Saturday, half day Sunday. It's nothing but land. I always say, no matter where you are in this business, it takes you to a higher level. It just, I don't care where you are, it brings you to a higher level. Just being surrounded by people of like mind. Um, and you realize, like we, I always say, we take our business very serious, ourselves not so much, right? We're a fun loving mm -hmm. group of people, like minded. Our community, I think, is above all else. Like, like this is super incredible. And so you get a feel for that at this, <coughs> at this boot camp. And I have to say, you know, obviously meeting Mark, you know, because, you know, he's got this kind of celebrity status, you know, he's on all these podcasts and, it, you know, that is definitely um, something that was a standout to me. But also, um, I'm going to have to say that it was not this one. I think the one prior, I'm trying to think where it was. What, uh, maybe, maybe, no, it wasn't. It was not in, uh, I think it was in Florida, the last one in Jan, not in January, that was Texas. So it might have been in October. Anyway, one of the people in the audience, Mark, was talking about a deal or someone, you know, or about somebody he had made an offer to or someone, in, you know, in his business. And they said, well, you call the person right now for us? And they kind of, I like threw him on the spot, and everybody's like wondering what's going to happen. So Mark's like, all right, boom, gets on the phone, puts it on the speaker, calls the guy, and, and goes through the whole process of negotiating a deal live, totally unprepared, but totally masterful. And that everybody came away from that as like, wow, oh, that awesome. was that was like they got the highest rate. Everybody was like, because we take the surveys, what do you like about it? And everybody was like, that was incredible. That was mm -hmm. just because he did it live. So that was awesome. I'm, I got to get, you know, more of that would be awesome. And so I'm going to keep pushing in that direction, like this, just watching him do his thing. Because, you know, he's very masterful with his negotiating skills, and this is the stuff that we learned from him. Uh, and it was great to see that, you know, that live environment. I well, think that's, I a, great, which that's a great story. Yeah, no, no, it was, it was awesome. Uh, um, let's see. We got, a, we got a question. All right. First, we got a oh, quote master. 
I, I think they're talking to you. That must be you with the com with the accent they're talking to, right? I don't know. Maybe right, right, yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> All right, here we go. This one's for you. All right, Chris says I'm in the process. I'm in the buying process for a few properties. I'm getting more resistance than I expected to paying the sellers after the deed is recorded. What's your experience? So, I find it really varies. Um, there are some people, and you probably agree, Mike, that they have absolutely no issue whatsoever right. deeding the property to you, sending you the deed, and you you tell them, okay, once once the deed is recorded, I send you a check, right? Yes. Uh, a lot, a lot of people are just are fine with that. They have absolutely no questions about it. They say, okay, let's do this. Here we go. What I do try to do is I get on the phone with these people to establish a good relationship with them. And if they ask me, you know, to prove the legitimacy of my business or who I, you know, that who I am, that I say I am, I'll do that for them. Uh, but uh, so so there's that camp, right? Yes. Now, there's also a camp who's very skeptical. They want the money. They want to sell the land. But there's no way they're going to deed the property to you. Um, so then you have to you have to compromise with them. Uh I've done half and half deals before where I, you know, when I first started out, I'd, I'd pay, I'd pay half, you know, I'd send them a deed to be, to, to be notarized along with half the purchase price. They would notarize the deed, send it back to me. And then after recording, I'd send them the next half. So that is a strategy that's worked for me in the past. You're taking a little bit of risk there. Um, but so are they when they, you know, when they deed you the property. Right. You're uh, spreading, spreading the risk. Good idea. Spreading the risk. Yep. And then uh, a mobile notary is nice. So I've used a mobile notary a handful of times. I just ask the seller to assume the cost of that. I found I have found mobile notaries for twenty dollars. I have found them for seventy dollars. It really varies. I go to one, yeah. two, three notary and try to find a mobile notary yep, and do it good. that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, but what what do you think, Mike? I mean, I think there are some people. Like I think Scott Todd tells tells people this is how we do it. There you go. Well, so so the, what, what's your what's your policy on that in your business? Well, you, what just, do you, do? you just hit on it right there at the end. I think a lot of times in the beginning the resistance is internal to ourselves, and yeah, yes, I think it, you're right. it's, it's being reflected by the person we're buying from. But my experience has been the more confident and the more you know, more that you understand the process, the more you mm -hmm. do this. This is like Mark says, rinse and repeat. The more faith you have in the process, the more the conviction you convey. And if you can very clearly, very clearly tell the person in no nonsense terms, this is how it's going to go. This right. is going to happen first, second, third, and you explain it and you tell them it's going to be clear communication that you, you drop down their, uh, their resistance. And it may not even surface. I mean, because if you're in the back of your mind saying it and you're thinking, geez, this person's not going to do this. You're conveying that energy to them. You truly are. Right. And the more that you uh, go through this process and the more that you, you know, become empowered by it, the less resistance you are going to meet. Now, there are going to be those people that are going to have issue with that, and you're going to have to go the route, like you said, of, uh, of a notary or whatnot and so on and so forth. But, um, you know, the reality is I believe that – and you can do this – through a canned email, if you can take the time, because sometimes we're dealing with people through email, sometimes through the phone. So you want to have um, practice. I don't care if it's with uh, someone in your family, in the mirror, to yourself, record yeah. yourself on Zoom. Get the flow of the of what you're going to say down. Get mm -hmm. that email down so you can hit canned email, send it. Every time it gets to the point of closing, boom, that email goes out. Already pre-thought, one time, done. And so I think that... The, really, the secret is to, you know, experiencing uh, and, and believing that you know yet what's going to happen. You convey that to them. Now, uh, simply file. I know that uh, Andy's going to comment here. Um, it does because what can happen too is if you get a PDF on simply file, the PDF is recordable, so yep. you can you can basically uh, confidently mail them the money, knowing that the deed is already able to be recorded. So um, that is true. And simply file is uh, an incredible game changer. I talk about paralysis by over analysis. Let's talk about when we had to mail the deeds in and like, mm -hmm. especially if I had a double record one on top of the other, I mean, open the package, look at it, shut it, open it, look at it again, shut, look at the, look at the form. It was a TD 1000, which is the associated Colorado form. Is that done? 
Shut it. Open it back up. Shut it. Oh, finally hand it to Laura. Laura, just close this thing up and put it in the mail. I know, right? <laughs> Talk about paralysis by over analysis. Awesome. And then if you did mess up, it comes back a couple weeks later. Oh, you needed you didn't you you sh you were ten cent shy. Like you couldn't have just like asked me for a dime, right? They yeah, send the whole thing back. But now the simply file, you know right away what's going on. You know, it's just it's a game changer. Absolutely. That is one hundred percent true, Andy. Any more questions? Let's go. We got, we got viewers out there. I see 14 viewers. There's got to be some awesome. questions out there. If any of you have been to boot camp, any favorite memories, uh, post those in the comments. Bill Blanchard, have you been to a boot camp? Hopefully Bill's still watching. Eric Peterson, if you're still watching, you have to have a favorite boot camp memory. And don't say uh, – wait a minute. I, I think don't I say – Eric, was it, meet, yeah, was it meeting me at boot camp? Was that your favorite memory, Eric? Oh, yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so, oh, here we go. I'll oh, see yeah. you guys in Vegas. Nice. Nice, nice. Yeah, I don't think there's that many spots left, honestly. You know, the boot camp, we keep well, them small. Up. We keep them intimate, and, you know, they do fill up, you know. So if you even think you want to be there, get on the horn, you know, talk to us. If you have a toolkit, you have uh, tickets, right? If you're in flight school, you have tickets. If you need tickets, we'll tell you how to get tickets. Call us, right? Talk mm -hmm. to us, and uh, we can hook you up. Uh, oh, what we got here? This is nice. Nice. This is a good one. Here you go. Take it away, Scott. Okay, you, you answer. I'll read it. Uh, tomorrow's our first mailing in flight school, and we'll be mailing out our first 20 offer letters. I'm nervous about how I'm pricing my offers. Once an offer is accepted, is it too late to renegotiate if I find something odd in due diligence? Good. Great question, Jim. Very good. Yeah, so this is where you hear Scott Todd say these wonderful things like done is better than perfect, or I, 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 I take that and re-paraphrase it because, you know, it's a great quote, but I want to put it in my terms. I say, shoot first, aim later. So it's like, it's like getting this done, as like Scott Todd says, is the most important thing. Now, you can always retrade, renegotiate, um, count, recount, or whatever you want to call it. There's nothing uh, that's preventing you from doing that. So you get these out, people respond, you find out the taxes are higher than you thought, you find out that there's um, you know, maybe there's a wash next to your property. I use everything I can to renegotiate and then turn around and actually use that as a highlight. Hey, look at, do you know there's a beautiful wash next to this when you sell it to something? Mm -hmm. I mean, you just, you got to use it on both sides of the equation. So don't be nervous. Don't be nervous about your mailing. This is exciting. And this is one of the great things about flight school is that you are forced to do what you have to do. You're going mm -hmm. to mail as opposed to, you know, the danger in the toolkit and the toolkit is phenomenal, is that you have to take the action. And right. some people are really great action takers. They're going to go right at it. But some people, three months later, hey, how's that mailing going? Oh, I got my list. I'm about to get that mailing together. Just They get that paralysis by overanalysis. Flight school, forget it. You're right. mailing. There's no yeah. way you're going to face Scott Todd the next week and not have your mailing out. So you are mailing. And if you're mailing, you're going to get accepted offers, counter offers, and so on and so forth. And if you're getting counter offers and accepted offers and so on and so forth, you're going to buy a property. So flight exactly. school enables you to buy property. So that's uh, that's huge. And, oh, Bill's still on. There it is. <laughs> what do you think of that? Well, of course. Would you agree with that, Eric Peterson? Yep. Yep. <laughs> so what do you think? The renegotiating thing, Mike, I mean – Again, that's just getting your legs underneath you, right? You got to uh, – I remember being nervous as heck the first time I tried to renegotiate with somebody. But the more confident – and I did practice that, honestly. I think I remember driving driving to work that morning and, you know, practicing how this conversation would go. And, uh, again, the more confident you sound, the more often you do it, uh, you're going to be able to, to negotiate people down. Um, you know, I – uh, Scott, Scott Todd tells a story all the time about how, uh, he had a, he had a buyer or he had a seller, uh, pay the back taxes for him and deed pretty much deed, what deed him property for a dollar or something like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've recently had several properties given to me. I know that sounds yeah. really bizarre, but it's a hundred percent true. Yeah. Um, I've had a couple given to me as well. Yeah, so these things happen. When you, I always tell people, and here's uh, Andy, you're right. Scott, I'm sure Scott Todd's listening somehow. He loves the show. I mean, you saw him on here. It's just, he says it's his favorite show. It's right up there with Jeopardy. 
So right, right. <laughs> I don't know. I just picture Scott Todd being really good at Jeopardy. I don't know. It's just my thing. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. We got a quote. Here we go. Awesome. Eric Peterson speaks. Why don't you read this for for the, for the uh, community? Let's hear it, Scott. All right. So uh, Eric says, my first time in VIP was pretty great. Outside of that, my first boot camp was in Orlando a couple of years ago. I was green and it was awesome. The amount of knowledge and information that was shared. Boot camp inspired me and gave me the tools to grow my business going forward. Yeah, that's something we should mention too, Mike, is uh, there's a VIP group for the for the coaching students, which I think for those folks is really powerful. That's something that I didn't that I didn't have. And I don't know if you had that. <laughs> He's watching. Yes, I knew it. I knew it. He, he put pause on. Je- he put pause on Jeopardy to come over to the nightcap. I knew it. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. That's I'm, great, Scott. I will be having color lights in the background here soon. So. Stay, stay tuned. We're, we're redoing our office in our master bedroom, and I, yeah, I'm getting that microphone that he has. I mean, I'm I'm Samsung and Scott Todd. You, there's no there's no doubt about it. So, totally. uh, yeah, yeah, someone put this in here. See, you're right, Andy. He was listening, and yes. he probably does have the mini bat out right now. He's always <laughs> listening. <laughs> no, the VIP room, That's Eric. Great point. What is the VIP room, Scott? What are they talking about? So the VIP room, the VIP room, which wasn't even occurring two years ago in boot camp, right? This is how something has changed and improved, uh, is for coaching students. It's for our year-long coaching students, and they have breakout sessions. Um, I don't know how much of the time it is, Mike, but probably half the time, right? Yeah, basically, um, if it's your, if you're coaching and it's your second boot camp, because if it's your first boot camp, even in coaching, there's so much value in that right. room where, where Mark is going through all the fundamentals but we want you, if you make the effort and you come back again, we're going to take you into a breakout room. And Scott and Tate are going to, like, they're going to break you down and build you back up again. It's not like, you know, make you feel great. It's really, this is, like, about making you better. So right. uh, there's no punches pulled. And they really do uh, break you down and build you back up again. And it's people uh, blown away by that and come back over and over again for that. So right. that VIP room, uh, you want to know more? Schedule a call with Scott and Mike. We'll talk. I, I, I said I'm not myself in the third person. Can you Did I just say the third, third person? Was that bad? I said Scott and Mike. That I feel really weird the way I said that. But uh, no, you just said Scott and my th- third person. I feel like Alex. Can you Trevet. type? Can you type our link okay. up there for scheduling? Yeah. Um, let's see, I will get it up. Here, there. Here, I can, can I do that? Can you? Uh, yeah, you can put a comment right in the face. Oh no, because you go in the Facebook right now, you're gonna bring a lot of feedback. Yeah, we'll get it. Can... All right, we'll get it. We'll get the link up there. Don't don't worry. This link for uh, scheduling a call with Scott and myself will be posted at the very end of the comments, uh, uh, and you can you do can, that. We love. You can also email us. You can also email us at. Uh, ah yes, unveil it. Unveil it. Unveil it. The new email address. Here we go. Info. At the Land Geek Diet Guy, no info at landgeekguys.com. That's it, right? Info at landgeekguys. No, it's not the. It's not dot com though, is it? Let yeah. me see. Okay, it is info at landgeekguys.com. You're right. You Dude, created we're dot coming it now. We're I mean, dot we're, com. That's we're, that's so we're we're, we're pulling together. We're dot You want to talk to Scott? You want to talk to myself? Email us, and we are going to be there to help you in any which way possible. Uh, I love that. You know, it's it's awesome. I've got a question. Oh, here we go. What's this? Tim Kerrigan. Due diligence, title issues, APN number, wrong indeed, legal description, not the same across a chain of title. Yeah, so now the APN, in my understanding, you know, can change. That's the way the counties mm-hmm. kind of label them. So, you know, what's most important is that con- continuity of the legal description. So if it's not the same across the legal description changes, then you may have an issue. And I would look further into that, uh, do a little bit more research. And depending on how big the deal is, that might be something for title. Because you know, the legal description is truly um, the part that you want to have. There's two things on a deed, right? How they conveyed it, what name. You know, was it Scott? What's your middle initial, Scott? A. Scott A. Bossman, or is it Scott Bossman, or is it Boston Bossman? Whatever's on that deed, you need to have on the new deed when you when you are now going to buy from them and, and the legal description. The APNs can change, though. And look at this. Boom. Thanks, Andy. Is that it? That's it. That's it, Andy. Thank you, sir. You're going to put our email, though, and also, Scott, right at the end of the broadcast down at the bottom. The, uh, 
Yeah, I'll put that in the comments for sure. Oh, you're going to say that? I, I can't put it in the comments either because we can't. I should be able to add a comment. No, I'll put it in the comments when we're finished. That's good. All right. All right. Any other questions for us? Uh, I Are think we, we still... missed one from Gary. Uh, oh, we? I'm sorry, Gary. I'm going to back up. Oh, all right. Awesome. Uh, KJ, I had one response to an offer that I totally realized I was high on my offer. I just told her so straight up that now I realize my offer was a bit high. And I had a few accepted offers, and hers is just one of them. She told me two properties of – she sold me two properties of 40% of what I originally offered. Yeah. Awesome. Gary, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Gary. Yeah, you can always – I mean, that's a, that's always a very good way to approach It's Like, listen, we're getting so many accepted offers that we had to reevaluate what was going on, and we recognized that we were just too high, and we can't afford right. to put ourselves in that position. Listen, we're investing in land, and we have to – our numbers are tight. So I apologize – but this is my, my, my highest offer to you is X amount of dollars. So right. that's awesome, Gary, that you went that way. Well, this has been pretty good. What do you think? We've been uh, rolling along here for a little bit. You know, next week we are going to um, roll in a guest. You know, we took a week off from the guest mode. We wanted to focus on Scott, and Scott wanted to focus on me. So the next, <laughs> next week we are going to have another surprise guest. Um, I, I really uh, think that uh, – um, you know, having a guest on here, like last week we did some problem solving. Before that, we had some inspiration with Scott Todd. Right. So let's see. Are we going to follow with inspiration, help, inspiration? Or I don't know. We'll see. I, we, we're going to see. We're going to surprise everybody next week with our surprise uh, guest. So that'll be That's uh, right. exciting, right? Yeah, yeah, that'll be great. I, I <laughs> love having – I you know, it's our only, only our fifth episode, but I mean – that's still a lot. Uh, five. That's five. a lot. I mean, I watch next. I watch some Netflix shows that only have five episodes. <laughs> right, like, exactly. The maximum right. of five. So yeah. uh, we we've we've now reached the limit. For, we could have a Netflix. This could be branded into a Netflix show now. Five episodes. Oh, easy. Yeah, for sure. Easy. But I but I what I was about to say is that I I just love having people on to tell their own story. Right. You have your story. I have mine. Uh, yeah. Kelly has a Kelly had a good story last week and. Yeah, it's it's been great. Um, oh, Chris. So that's just a way to get a hold of Mike and myself. We have a shared email address. It's info. Are we gonna have a sh are we gonna have a shared Facebook soon? I mean, where's this I going? I think we might. I mean, I, I our wives are already joking that we should have a shared Facebook. So, you know, we might as well do that. Info at landgeekguys.com is the email address where you guys can get in touch. Yeah, that's with us. pretty much anything. You want to talk about any questions you have, we're happy to discuss. So you guys yeah. can throw anything that way, and we'll be here to help. Um, and, you know, we, we really do truly – I mean, we're blessed that we get to engage with the community, and uh, our community is awesome. So we love that part. I know I'm speaking for Scott, but I know he feels the same as me. We just – you know, we enjoy meeting the people coming into this business, getting set up, watching them as they go through and have their initial successes and, and how it empowers them. Mm -hmm. So – you know, absolutely reach out to us. Yeah. And sure. come to boot camp and see us live. Yes. And leave comments on Nightcap because if you leave comments on Nightcap, you get added to the uh, to the hat drawing for a free one hour coaching call. That'll be yes. episode eight. Yes, we drew one out last week, so we're gonna actually uh, schedule that call. That was Mike Ballback, right? That got that. Yep. We got yeah. We got to get that call scheduled with him. So. Um, yeah, we're going to continue to do that. And we'll have some other nice giveaways as well. Uh, oh, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> well, Andy, we're we're in talks for that. We're You know, I don't know. Thursday night, it was going to be an interesting <laughs> night. We, we, <laughs> well, I don't Thursday, know I don't, I don't think Thursday's going to be I don't think That may not be a good time. But Friday, <laughs> night, Friday night is the happy hour, right? Yeah, right, right. So, so, I mean, we could maybe have a, Andy, maybe Andy, we, we may have a live uh, night cap these smoke, show. These smoking jackets might be getting packed in the suitcases. <laughs> I already took mine to Florida. Right. <laughs> All right. So, we're going to look and see if we have any more final questions. Um, but, Scott, it's been great. Um, yeah, again, it's been fun. Episode five. Um, I'm gonna, now I get to put your name up now that we're at the end. How's that? I'm going to rename you next week as Boston Boss Man. Is that okay? Boston Boss Man, sure. Yep. Boston Boss Man. 
Yeah. So yeah, I'm coming up, you know, I'm getting some nicknames. Dude Buddy, Boston Bossman. Oh, here, here's a, a Kenny J. Kaysen as a comment or question. Oh. I bought my proxies, anonymous proxies, and it looks like they are changing things now. It says to buy new proxies, go to my account dot anonymous dash proxies dot net. Do you guys anything about this? Uh, I don't know anything about that, Mike. Do you? That's what well, I use, I think. No. Yeah, anonymous proxy is what most people use, and you know, so you know, there's many ways to to approach the business, right? Delegation, automation, uh, systems, and so when it comes to uh, Craigslist. You know, I would say, you know, obviously the go-to is what posting domination. Posting domination, talk, yeah. Talk about the height, the height of, uh, of automation, you know, and putting things into into power that way. Um, I happen to have someone in charge of my marketing that handles that aspect for me. That's just been completely, you know, outsourced to that marketer. And they're still, but I did provide them with a version of posting domination. So um, I haven't have been the one in there doing that. So we will get some information on that. And oh, here we go. Just changing their interface. Just that's yeah. the flaw. They're usually pretty good. Yeah, that's what I figured. So I have someone. I haven't had. Mine just renewed. Uh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I haven't had any issues from the, the person doing my posting. So. Um, so I don't think anything's changed that drastically in that sense, but uh, sounds like there's a little bit of a name change, or as Eric put it so eloquently, changing their interface. He's so he just he's very good with his words, isn't he? Yeah, he eloquent. really is. Very Eric eloquent. Eloquent Peterson. He's eloquent. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. So I don't think there's much going on there, Kenny. In terms of it, sounds like it's just a name change. Scott. Are you going to do the toast? Oh, I'm going to do the toast. I had a toast lined up. Where did it go? You could just say, to my best dude buddy. And <laughs> make... Dude buddy. Listen, yeah. we all want to thank you all for tonight. This was great uh, for have, to have you all um, on the show. Um, and episode five. Yeah. Next week's episode six. Next week right. we will have a guest, as we, as we promised. And... Uh, yeah, you feel free to also also leave. leave some comments about uh, any topics you guys want us to, to discuss. Um, you know, something I was thinking about today, Mike, maybe we could discuss kind of the anatomy of a, of a deal here uh, in the next couple weeks. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a great idea. Go over maybe a cash deal and a terms deal, something like that. Do a little case study or, or something. So, But if anybody has questions, oh, we got applause from, from Jim Lala. That's awesome. Thanks, Jim. It's coming in over and over again. It's the slow clap. <laughs> the golf clap. The golf clap. All right. Well, everybody raise your drinks, and uh, here's to seeing you in Vegas, hopefully. Get signed up ASAP because there are few spots remaining, I believe. Yeah, I don't uh, have the exact amount, but I know it's yeah. minimal. Yeah, but the Vegas boot camp is great. The hotel is amazing where we're having the, the conference. So, Team MZ. I am Team MZ as well. Ah, oh, that was nice. I'll well, drink to that. All right. Thanks, Here's guys. We appreciate having you here, and we'll see you next week. See you guys.